Welcome to Channel 18 News, I'm Jim Rogers. Marco Antonio Flavela Puga, age 19, of Juarez, Mexico, met Sergeant Harry Washington and Deputy Pruitt of the Hopkins County Sheriff's Office Interdiction Squad on Thursday evening around 7.30 p.m. In the encounter, Sergeant Washington asked for and was granted permission to search the young man's bags. Three clear vacuum sealed bags containing a white crystal-like substance were found. Flavella Puga admitted the substance was his. The substance tested positive to be methamphetamine. He's in Hopkins County Jail charged with possession of a controlled substance penalty group 1 more than or equal to 400 grams. Blake E. Radke, age 38, of Broken Bow, Oklahoma, was driving a Kia at 61 miles per hour in a 75 mile per hour zone. He was traveling Interstate 30 in the left-hand lane at this, at that speed without passing another vehicle or making a left turn. When stopped by the Columbia police officer, it was noted that Radke had a glass pipe commonly used to smoke marijuana sitting on the center console. Radke was asked if anything illegal was in the vehicle and Radke handed the officer the pipe. Asked about other illegal items and Radke said no. The records check showed that Radke had multiple arrests for drugs and theft. A probable call search located a black zipper glasses case behind the center console in the re rear seat on top of some tools. The case contained another glass pipe commonly used to smoke methamphetamine and a clear plastic bag with crystal-like substance that tested to be methamphetamine. Radke is in Hopkins County Jail charged with possession of a controlled substance penalty group 1, more than 4 grams, less than 200 grams. He's being held on a $20,000 bond. A draft policy to implement state law allowing concealed carry at Paris Junior College was recently reviewed by the Board of Regents and plans were made to appoint an at-large regent to represent Lamar County. With the passage of House Bill 4276, PJC may now restructure the board to include Lamar County. Discussion centered on taking applications for an at-large regent position to represent the county. Dr. Anglin Dr. Pam Anglin will finalize a form for applicants to fill out. PJC elections will be held on even numbered years, so next Regents election will be conducted in November 2018. PJC received at the recent Texas Association of Community College Business Offices an annual meeting the Billy Hibbs Safety Award for exemplary safety practices resulting in the lowest loss ratio in 2015-2016. They were awarded this for the best worker safety record among all community colleges in Texas. What's up, Bo? Hey, Doug. What's going on? <laughs> what? Debbie Bohannon and I own this. Yeah, I bought it in 2006. Started out as Studio 222, but I didn't realize at the time that everybody would think it was a hair salon. So, <laughs> so uh, recently we changed it to that recording place because that's what everybody was calling it, and they'd say, you know that recording place downtown, so I just decided to call it that. And what is it exactly you do in here? Uh, right now it's mostly rehearsal space for bands, for local bands. And we do do some recording when people want it, so. Okay, we're sitting in here on a Sunday afternoon. Is this a regular occurrence? How often do bands come in here to I have, I have this band, Mother Mammoth every Sunday and I have uh, the Muddy River Band rehearses every Monday and Wednesday and I have Ricky Taylor Band every Friday night and those are, those are regular rehearsals for them. Describe the building to me. It's um, over a hundred years old and uh, when I got it there was None of the walls were here. We had to, we had to enclose, we had to enclose the front to keep the street noise out. And then we built an isolation booth for vocals and a control room for uh, the recording and mixing processes. And the rest of it is glorified storage right now. How difficult was it to soundproof this room? Actually, it was, it was really easy. Um, We worried about street noise and train noise at first, 
Yes, because you're sitting on Main Street and you're two blocks away two from blocks the train from the track. Two blocks from the train track. But with the thickness of the walls, El Charro was here before it burned out on the on the west side. And when I bought it, it was just it was just you know like it was open. There was no there, all the exterior walls were still there, but there was no roof and nothing on the inside. And the wall is still thick with the brick. And and the other wall next to the parking lot is a good two feet thick because the in because the wall from the previous building is still on the outside of the wall of this building, so it's extra thick. And then with the building the wall across the front, I it created enough of a dead airspace to keep the sound out. And since the the actual recording part is toward the front, we have a lot of building behind us to keep that noise out. So it worked out really well. And surprisingly, unless it's just absolutely quiet in here, you can't even hear the train when it comes by. proofing qualities of the building itself. We were actually in here recording one night and uh, it was storming outside and we had no idea until the electricity went off. And we all made our way in the dark to the front of the building to look out the windows and all the new trees that they had planted on Main Street were all flapping sideways in the wind like flags and we had no idea any of that was going on until the lights went out. That was the most surprising occurrence that I had. Not knowing that not knowing that everything outside was blown away while we were in here. Okay, you say you record in this studio. Yeah. How many have you recorded? And what are they used for? Oh, it's mostly bands or individual artists like a singer songwriter. They come in and they use the isolation booth and we record them like doing their material with just the vocal and the guitar. And uh, then we have full bands. They come in, full bands that come in. Uh, um, the Barefoot Texans recorded here. Um, Kirby Brown recorded here a couple of times. Um, Seth Underwood with the Muddy Rivers Band that's, that's uh, here on Mondays and Wednesdays has been recording his band. He brings his own uh, equipment, which is what a lot of people do now. They have their own digital audio workstation or Pro Tools on their computer, and mostly what they need is the space rather than for somebody to actually record them, because they have their own computers and hard drives and stuff like that, so it makes it easy for me. <laughs> I, just, I just rent them the space and they come in and do their thing.
you hoping to do this? Till I can't. <laughs> Just till I can't do it anymore. Do you have any time available if somebody wanted to rent this? Oh, sure. All they need to do is get a hold of me. How, how would they do that? Uh, just call me. 903-268-4250 uh, is my cell phone number. And just give me a call, and I'll we'll set it up however they need it. Here's Don Julian with sports. As the Wildcats football offensive coordinator, Matt Young, finds a lot to like about 7-on-7 seven -seven football. The Wildcats played 14 games during May and June. Coach Young says the players develop camaraderie. He says when it's 120 degrees on the turf, players that go through that together can help but get closer. Coach Young says Wildcats players learn how to communicate. He says unlike other teams that use dads or former players as 7-on-7 seven -seven coaches, the Wildcats players are on their own. They coach themselves. Coach Young says it makes the players communicate to find answers. He says they have to talk to each other to make adjustments. Coach Young says 7-on-7 seven seven is beneficial because of the sheer number of reps that players experience. He says there is no telling how many times or throws that uh, Cason Goodson caught out of the backfield while being contested. Coach Young says that can't be simulated. He says that also goes for receivers such as Simeon Taylor or Landry Tyson. Coach Young adds quarterbacks Ryan Humphreys and DeCorey and Young made a lot of throws while reading the defenses. He says they got more reps by far the past two weekends at state qualifier tournaments than they will during the entire summer. Coach Young says 7-on-7 seven seven is invaluable for players getting confidence in a play or coaches getting confidence in a player. He says players pick up little things that help them better understand football. Coach Young also sees benefits for Wildcats defenders. He says there's no telling how many times cornerback Connor Bergen batted down the ball on go routes as offenses were picking on him. Coach Young says uh, Bergen has developed confidence that will serve him well this fall. Coach Young also cited defensive back Cortavius Pruitt, who moved to the defensive side of the ball this spring after playing receiver last year, and uh, who gained confidence during the 7-on-7 seven -seven season. Thanks for watching Channel 18 News. Have a great evening.